Hi guys. Today we're going to be talking about maps and topography and how you can use maps and um, get to be familiar with them. I see a couple of you guys have said hello. Hi Evan, hi Ian. Um, hi April, welcome back. It's good to see all of you. Hello, I'm definitely gonna pronounce this wrong. Ibuka, tell me if I did that completely wrong. Um, I'll do my best to fix it. Okay, um, I got it correct, wow, that's good to hear. Okay, so let's get right into it. Um, go over here. Hi Gerard, hi Aditi. Um, that's another one I might've gotten wrong. Okay, so we're gonna be talking about wilderness maps today. Um, the first thing to talk about is what is a map? So a map is a drawing of all or part of the Earth's surface. So I'm sure you've seen maps of the whole world and maybe you've seen a globe, which is a kind of map that's on a sphere. So you can move it around and see all the different parts exactly as they are in the real Earth. Um, and you've probably seen maps of just specific countries or just maybe only your city or only a smaller area that you live in. Um, there are lots of different kinds of maps and they come in different sizes and they can be organized different ways. Evan says he got a globe, that's awesome. Um, so a globe is really useful because it's round. So you can see where everything is exactly as it is in the real world. The trouble with trying to look at a flat map is that you're talking about a solid earth and you're trying to look at it on a flat piece of paper or a flat image. Um, which means that the distances between things or um, where they are exactly relative to each other or their size are going to be shifted a little bit to make them fit on a flat image. One of the things that's really hard to see on a flat image is height. It's really hard to tell um, how high up a mountain is or how low a valley is because of the, fa the fact that it's flat. Aubrey says she has a map of the whole world. That's awesome. What other kinds of maps have you guys seen? This is topography in here. Um, we're gonna be talking about a kind of map called topographic maps. And topography is the study of the shapes and features on the surface of the earth. So that talks about anything from rivers to mountains to um, things that people have put on there, anything that shows the different shapes on the surface of the earth. Um, Hi, Nia. April says she doesn't have either, no maps. Um, it's okay. Luckily, Google Images has some that you can look at. Evan says some globes have the same surfaces as Earth. You mean like um, you can feel where the mountains are and where it moves down? I have seen some globes like that. Those are really cool. Nia says she has a globe too. That's awesome. Um, Evan says yes. Yeah, those maps are really cool. Or the globes. I've seen some maps also that have real mountain ranges raised up. Those ones are called relief maps. If it has um, real 3D texture to it and it's built up in the places where it's built up in the real world, then you call that a relief map. Those ones are really cool and they're really helpful to give you an idea of how tall things actually are. Um, let's go to this next slide. Topography comes from Greek words. One is Greek topos, it means place, and the other one is graphine, which meant to write. So it's talking about writing a place, and that is exactly what topography is. It's a way of writing what things are in a place and what a place is like. Um, so a topographic map is a map that uses topography and shows the locations and shapes of different features on the Earth's surface, um, which is really helpful because sometimes you don't have a map, um, like Evan was talking about, like a relief map, you don't have one where you can really feel and see where the mountains are. And so it, it helps you to be able to see it on the map showing, oh, here's a mountain. And sometimes it will show you, here's how tall the mountain is. And that can give you a better idea of what's really there. Um, Nia, thank you so much. She was commenting on um, a project we talked about in one of the recent webinars. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, Okay, so what kinds of things would be included in a topographic map? 
Well, one would be names of places, water bodies, highways, things that are there that you might run into or encounter as you're traveling. It also talks about um, vegetation. Like for example, if you have a forest or you have an area with big plains, that might be something that would be included in a topographic map so that you can see what the land is like there. Um, here it says this word reliefs again, that's what we were talking about earlier with the mountains or valleys being raised up or lowered down so you can really feel and see the shape of the earth on the map. So that might include mountains, hills, valleys, and plateaus. A plateau is a kind of flat area that's raised up a little bit above the regular surface of the earth. It will include waters like oceans, lakes, rivers, and streams, and also culture establishments. So this is talking about things that people and societies have put in place like cities, railroads, power lines, anything else along those lines would go on a topographic map. Um, Gerard says, isn't a topographic map a map that has the earth put on a piece of paper? Um, yes, it does have the earth and it puts it on a piece of paper and many kinds of maps are topographic maps. Um, so that is pretty correct. April says, are you the teacher that does 3D modeling on computers? Yes, I think there's another teacher named Sterling that's done a little bit of 3D modeling, but I've done some of that also. Um, I did one yesterday on that. Denali says, they're following along on a topographic map of Mount Adams. Awesome, that will be really helpful to have a topographic map to look at. Okay. There's another word that we need to talk about, and this word is called contour. Um, oops, a contour is an outline, especially of a curving or irregular figure. So in this picture on the background of this slide, you can see all these lines in the field. Those could be considered contours. Um, so in maps, sometimes they'll use contours and it has a specific meaning in a map. So what are contour lines? They're lines that are on a map that show a change in elevation. Elevation is how high up you are, and it's usually measured from how far above the sea you are. So if you go to the beach and you're standing right next to the ocean, people call that sea level. You're right where the level of the sea is. Um, if you were to go 100 feet above that, you would be 100 feet above sea level. So that would mean that you have some elevation. And a contour line can show elevation. Um, they usually look wavy or circular. So you can see in the background of this slide, there are all these lines crossing the image. There are some in circles up in this top right corner uh, and some more wavy ones in the other corners. Those are all contour lines. This also says that everything near that line is generally the same height from sea level. So it's a little bit hard to see in this background image because part of it's covered, but I'll show you some other images. And everything that follows one line, if it's all on the line, it's all at about the same height. So it could go all across the map and all around, but you can tell that as long as it's on the same line, it's gonna be at the same height or the same elevation. Okay, so this is a contour map. Um, Gerard says, why are topographic maps more specific than other maps? Topographic maps are more specific in some ways because they show different information than other maps might show. There are lots of kinds of maps and some of them show things like what um, products an area produces. So you can find maps that show little pictures of this area produces mostly farming products and it might have a little picture of wheat or this one produces mostly industrial products and it might have a picture of some machinery. Um, and so a topographic map is just one kind of that. And specifically as a part of topographic maps are contour maps that are used to show elevation or how high up above the sea you are. Um, he's also asking what the word contour is derived from. I don't actually know what the word contour is derived from. I should have thought to put that in there, but I forgot to grab that. Um, but if you search in a dictionary for the word contour, it should show up with um, where the word is derived from. Gerard is also asking, how does a contour line show the elevation when it's on a flat piece of paper? That's exactly what we're about to talk about because it's a pretty interesting solution to how to show elevation. So if you look at this picture that's on the screen now, you can see at the top, there's this um, picture of a little hill. You can ignore all of the letters for this. We don't really need the letters. You just need to be able to see the shape and the size of the hill. Um, but you can see this little hill 
and you can see that it's got a peak at the top and it's a little bit shifted to the right. And then you see all these lines going across it. And if you look at how the lines um, are spaced apart, they're all about the same distance from each other. So from the bottom line to the line just above it, um, I guess we can use the letters, the one that goes from A to B, that line, and then it goes up a, a little bit and it goes to the line that goes from C to D. And then it goes up a little bit further and it goes to the line that goes from E to F and then up again to the line from G to H and up to I to K and then up to the line that goes from L to M. Um, those lines are all spaced apart the same amount. So you can tell that every time you get to a new line, you're gonna be the same distance higher up. So it might be five meters or it might be five kilometers. Um, or it might be five inches or five centimeters, but whatever it is, it's gonna stay the same every line. So if you look down at this drawing below it, it looks kind of like an egg shape. Um, Gerard described it as a whirlpool. It does look like a whirlpool. Um, so you can look at this kind of whirlpool drawing and notice that each of these round lines, these circles in the whirlpool are actually one of these straight lines from the hill. So the line that goes from A to B translates into this outer circle. Um, and it goes, if you look, this little line going from the big letter A to the little M down in the whirlpool, um, that touches right on the same line. And then the outer circle of this whirlpool extends all the way over to the letter B. So it's just the same width. And that shows what it would be like looking at a top-down view. And then the next line, the one from C to D, becomes this second circle. And it's a little bit smaller. Um, and so you can tell how big the mountain would be if you sliced it off that far above the first line. Um, and then the next line goes down all the way up until this tiny circle in the middle. That tiny circle is the same as this line up here at the top in the mountain from um, the letter L to the letter M. So that's a lot to figure out just by looking at it, but it should give you a little bit of an idea. If you have questions on that, please put them in the Q&A section because I know that concept can be a little bit confusing. Gerard says, why does it show a contour line in a circle if it goes in, up, and down? Um, explain that question a little bit more. I don't quite get it. Is the bigger circle of the contour line the bottom part of the hill or the top part? The bigger circle of the contour lines is um, the bottom part of the hill. So the bigger the circle, the bigger the area of the hill we're talking about. So it's like, here, you can imagine if I take a piece of paper um, and we say, we'll fold it like that. This is our hill. Then this part um, at the bottom, this would be where we draw a big circle. And then we would go up a little bit. And when we're up at a higher part, it would be a slightly smaller circle. And then all the way up until we're towards the top. And then we would draw a smaller circle and then maybe a really tiny one to be the very top. Um, it's asking, is the equator a contour line since it goes around the earth? Not quite. The equator um, is another kind of line that's used on globes to show you um, where you are. And the, so the globe usually has lines going around this way and around from top to bottom. And by working with those lines, you can tell exactly where you are in the globe. Um, so again, why does a contour line go around and around? Because you are looking at it as if it's from a top down view. So if I, um, let's say I have, you guys see that here. So if this is a hill, well, instead of looking at it from the front, like the camera is, you can imagine that I'm looking down at it um, and looking from the top. So I would see the very top of the hill where it's at a high elevation would only be a small portion of it. And then looking down to a lower elevation, it would have a larger portion of it. So I would see a bigger circle and it keeps going wider and wider. So you keep seeing the circles going around each other. Okay, good. So let's look here. We're gonna look at another definition. And this is a contour interval. So those lines that are going in circles, those are called the contour lines. 
And the contour interval is the vertical distance, which means the distance up and down between the elevations or the heights represented or shown by adjacent contour lines. So contour lines that are next to each other on a map. That's a big definition to take in. So we'll talk through that a little bit. Um, if this is a map, a contour map of a hill, and you can see all the lines going around each other, we're talking about the how um, much difference in height there is between this line and the next line. So these are adjacent contour lines. They're next to each other. So we'll say this outside one and second one. And then we're looking at the vertical distance and the elevations. So how much higher is the land shown by this line than the land shown by this line? Um, and that change in height is what's called the contour interval. Um, it says, what does adjacent mean? Adjacent means right next to each other. So if you're sitting in class next to your friend, your friend is adjacent to you. Um, or if I ask you to grab the pen adjacent to the red pen, you would grab whichever one is next to it. Maybe it's a blue pen. Um, okay, so I drew a couple examples of some hills with contour lines um, just to show what kinds of different shapes you could do. And then we'll get into a couple more complicated examples as it progresses. But let's look first at this picture. It's a little bit confusing because there are so many lines, but it has a couple important things to look at. The first is that there are contour lines. So all these lines going around um, are the contour lines. And you can tell by looking at them and how close they are to each other or how um, or which ones are inside of each other, how high up different parts of the land are. These numbers on the screen in this picture tell you what the elevation is or how high you are above sea level. So here where it says 7,725, that means that you're 7,725 meters above sea level. Um, and then as it goes closer and closer in here, you see it starts changing, go 7,744. Um, over here it's 7,750. In here it's 7,628. Um, so you can see the changing height there. The other thing that's important to look at here is the scale. So in the bottom left corner of this picture, it says original scale one to 10,000. So that means that if you look at the little ruler kind of looking bar down there, that's called the scale. And that shows you for how much distance on the map, um, how much distance is there actually in real life. So if I wanted to draw a map of, let's say, Delphi, I wouldn't want to draw a map that's exactly the same size as Delphi because that would be huge. It would be completely impractical to carry around or use because it would be just as big as the school. I might as well be measuring the school every time I want to get a measurement but I could scale it down or make it smaller. So instead of saying, um, let's say I measured a hallway and it was like 100 meters long. Well, instead of drawing 100 meters on my map, I could say, okay, well, every 10 meters is gonna be one centimeter. So then I would draw for the first 10 meters of the hallway, I would draw just a one centimeter line on my map. And then I'm like, oh, there's another 10 meters. So I draw another centimeter. And by the time I get to the end of the 100 meter hallway, I would have taken only 10 centimeters of actual space on my map. Um, what is the adjacent contour line next to the top? Um, I don't see which one you're talking about. Oh, the, the square around it is just the frame of the picture. Um, if you're talking about a different one, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Original scale means the, so the scale is how much you change the size. Uh, and original scale means that that's how much it was at first. So because it's a digital image, you could um, change the size of the picture to make it bigger or smaller. So then that would affect the scale because you might be looking at where it's meant to be one centimeter, you might have stretched it out to be two centimeters or half a centimeter. So it's just telling you that's what the scale was originally before anything was changed. He's asking, it's one of something on the map is 10,000 of what in real life? So we're talking about centimeters. So 
one centimeter, oops, one centimeter on the map is 10,000 centimeters in real life. And you can see that over here, it has these four little centimeter um, lines and it goes up to 400 meters. So you can see that each one of these lines would be 100 meters. And because there are 100 centimeters in one meter and 100 meters in one of these little parts of the scale, then you can multiply those together and get 10,000 centimeters on the real world compared to one centimeter on the map. Um, good, does that answer your question? Okay, so the other thing I want to point out in here is the contour interval. So this says five meters, which means that every, um, between every line, there's a five meter change in elevation or how high up you are. So for these lines that are really far apart, that means that the slope is really little. So you're only going up a little bit because you have to go a wide distance in order to change your elevation only five meters. If they're really close together, then from here, you're at one elevation. And then by the time you're here, you're five meters above that. So it's gonna be a very steep change. Um, so that's one thing to know when you're looking at contour maps is that the closer the lines are together, the steeper the slope is gonna be. If the lines are really far apart, it's gonna be a much easier slope. That can be useful if you're looking at where you wanna go hiking or where you want to build a trail or where you're thinking about um, building a new house or building a log cabin. You're gonna to wanna to be thinking with, well, okay, if on the contour map there are tons of lines really close together, that means you're looking at building something or walking somewhere that's on a steep slope. If the lines are very far apart, then it's gonna be a very small slope if there's any at all at that point. So that would be a good place if you're looking for somewhere flat. Or if you're looking for a really tough climb, then it would be great to look for somewhere where there are lots of lines close together. Um, Gerard's asking, is this the end of your slide? Yes, but I have some papers and drawings that we're gonna get into next because it was um, easier to draw the specific examples I wanted than to find them online. Um, okay, so if you are drawing a contour map, let's just take an example of a really simple hill. So that's our um, simple hill and it just goes up and it comes back down. The next thing you'd wanna figure out is drawing lines straight across it that are all about the same distance from each other. So I drew some lines across like that. Um, and now I know that each one of these lines that goes straight across is going to be um, one of my circular lines when I draw a contour map. So now I'm gonna look at, okay, well, this bottom line, I wanna have a line on my contour map that's the same, about the same size as that, as if I was looking from the top down onto this hill. So I would draw a big circle that's about as wide. So now this is the beginning of my contour map. Um, and then I would want to take the next line. So I, I've done this bottom line and that's, that's my big circle here. Um, and then now I want to take this next line. Okay, so that's a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna draw that a little bit inside this line. Um, let's draw that and it doesn't, it's not very much side to side, it stays pretty much in the center. So my circle here is gonna stay just about in the center. Now the next thing is I've done these two lines, so I'm gonna take this next one. I'm just gonna keep doing that all the way up. So now I've drawn my next line and then I have one more line to do before I've reached the top of my lines here. So I'll put my last one on and this becomes my contour map. Um, so by looking at um, a kind of map like this, you can actually see how, um, how a, a real mountain or a real hill looks. Thank you for the guys that reminded me to turn off the uh, screen share. I forget to do that. Um, if I forget in the future, please go ahead and just put it in the comments and I will fix that. So if I were to look at a map that looks like this, I would recognize the lines are about the same distance apart, which means that it's gonna be a pretty steady slope. If you look at our hill, it is a pretty steady slope. It doesn't get really steep at one point or really 
um, shallow at another point. And I would also notice that it doesn't have a lot of lines. Um, they're not super close together. So if let's say our contour interval or the elevation, the height change between each line was five meters, I would know that, well, if I'm starting at zero meters, then I'd be at five. And then this next one, I would be at 50, or sorry, 10 and then 15 by the time I get to the top. So I would know that that's not a super tall hill. Um, Gerard says, do people only use contour lines for hills, mountains, volcanoes, and other steep slopes? Um, they're very useful for steeper slopes, but you can totally also use them for slopes that are barely there at all. If you have a little bit of elevation, um, then contour lines can still be very useful. And part of the way you can make them useful is by changing your contour interval. So if I'm going to draw a map of a mountain that's, let's say it was um, a billion meters tall, we're going to say we have a mountain that tall. Well, I wouldn't want to use a contour interval of five meters because I'm going to have to draw a lot of lines to get up to a billion. So maybe I would say um, like five million meters would be my contour interval. And then you know that every time there's a line, I've gone up five million meters. Well, that would be super impractical if I was going to draw like a city landscape and see the uh, elevation of a city. It's definitely not going to get anywhere close to five million meters. So I wouldn't even end up drawing a single line. But I could make it something like one meter or five meters. And then even the smallest change in elevation, I would be able to see. So if it was a very flat city, I might say I want one meter contour intervals so that every time it changed one meter, I would be drawing another line. And you could see very accurately how the city goes up and down. Um, Gerard, I see your question about wonder. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but I'll look at that at the end and get back to you. Um, Aubrey, we actually have until two o'clock or almost two o'clock. I've got to run a little bit before then. Um, Gerard says, contours are cool. Thank you. I like contours too. Um, I think it's super interesting to see what they do. April, thank you for the time. Um, okay, so let's look at another kind of hill. So let's say, I were to draw one that slopes up steeply on one side and then it goes down really shallow on the other side. Um, so this is the next one we're looking at. Well, I'm gonna wanna draw my line so that I can see where I need some circles. So I'm gonna draw starting from the bottom and just try and draw straight across or as straight as I can um, and try and space them out pretty evenly. So those are the lines that I have. Um, and then when I start drawing my circles for my actual contour map, I want to put them about in the same place and the same size as these ones. So this bottom line goes pretty much across the page. So I'm going to draw a nice big circle for that. Um, and then, so that's what I have so far. That's my nice big one for the uh, very bottom line. And then the next line above that is a little bit shifted over. It's not quite in the middle. It comes over to this side a little bit. So my next line is going to be a little bit over to the side. So I'm going to draw that next circle and it doesn't go all the way over to the side because I want it to um, show that it doesn't quite go um, evenly on each side. And then the next line continues that trend. It keeps going over to the side and this side's really steep. So I'm going to draw another one like that and it's going to keep shifting. So now this is what I have. And then I'm just going to draw these last two lines in there. And then we end up with something looking like this. The difference between this and um, the last one we drew, the last one we drew looked like this, is that we can see in here, it's all spaced about around the center. Over here, they shift over to the side, which means that we can tell the top of the mountain, if we were to redraw the mountain from this drawing, you would know that um, instead of being an even slope right across, it's gonna be over to one side and then it's gonna go down steeply because you want the peak to be wherever this smallest circle is. And you can also tell that where it's a shallower slope, the lines get farther apart. So over here, there's this wide gap. So that means if we're gonna take say a five meter contour interval, you have to go this far or whatever this would be to scale uh, in order to go up five meters. Whereas on this side, you only have to go this far to have gone up five meters. 
Okay, so the next thing is what if we had a mountain that had two peaks? Instead of just being a straightforward mountain like that, what if it went up and then dipped down again and then went back up? How would we draw that? Well, let's see. First, I'm just gonna draw the mountain so we have something to look at and help visualize it a little bit better. So this is what we'll use. Um, it goes up, it's a little bit like a volcano if it had exploded and the top came off. So first thing we're gonna do is get in here and draw some lines straight across it. Um, and then we start making the contour map. Well, if we look at this, you can see that in this middle part, the line goes all the way across, but it only actually crosses the real mountain part. We'll fill this in so we can tell. Um, it only really crosses the mountain on this part of the line and on this part of the line. So when we draw that on our map, it's only gonna have circles in those places. We're not gonna include this inside part. Um, so I'm gonna draw a big circle for that bottom one, and then I'm gonna draw a couple inside of that. So let's say those three lines, those are gonna be, um, oh, I guess I should put four. So these ones will be our bottom four lines here. So we've got one, two, three, four. And now we're up to this one where it starts splitting the two peaks of the hill. So now I'm gonna draw two smaller circles to show where it's crossing. So I have those two circles in there, um, just like I have these two points where our line crosses the two peaks. Um, so that's what that represents. And then this one has two even smaller points where it crosses the peaks and they're farther apart. This distance between them is a lot wider than it is right here. So I'm gonna draw two smaller circles inside of those. And now we have a contour map like this. And you can see that for the outside part, it's going up on all sides. And then it starts getting to the top and it gets up really high in here and it gets up really high in here. But this part stays the same. Um, so you can see where this line gets filled in. You can imagine that that's all like one relatively flat part. And then this grows on top of that and this grows on top of that. Um, okay, does anybody have any questions on that part? The next thing we're gonna do is talk about what if you wanted to show something that was going down instead of up. Imagine you have, um, Instead of a mountain, you have a valley. Well, you could draw lines, but if you draw lines, it looks like you're drawing a mountain. So how do you tell the difference? There is a way to do that. And I haven't seen it on all maps, but I have seen it on some that it gets used to indicate the difference between a hill and a valley. And the way that it looks is like, if this was a regular contour line, you draw all these little lines sticking out from inside. I'll show you in one sec. And that indicates that the line is a drop down instead of a step up. Um, so a line like this means you're going up. A line like this means you're going down. Um, or for the first time that you draw one like this, it means you're staying level. So you could take, let's say, um, draw this quickly. Okay. So you say, Gerard says the two-headed mountain looks like a plate of omelets without the bacon. Yes, it kind of does. Um, okay. So you could take a contour map that looks like this and you'd be able to see that this outside line is where we're starting. Um, and usually on a map, it would have some number to tell you where that is. So we'll, we could say, just so we can say something, we'll say that's 100 meters. Um, so that's 100 meter elevation right there. And then here, it goes up a little bit. So maybe that's 110. Um, so we could say 110 there. And then it goes up again right here. So we can say that's 120. So now we know what that hill looks like is we have a big base and then one part of it goes up a little bit. Um, but this side has these little lines in the circles, which means that they're not going up, they're going down. 
So instead of going up to 110, this might go down to 90. Um, so you can see that that first one is 90, and then it keeps going down. So, um, or actually, I think the first line that you draw with the little lines inside show it's going down and stays the same, stays level as whatever circle it was in. So that would be 100. I'm not 100% positive on that. So you might want to check that one before quoting me on it. Um, but then this next one would be a step down. So if we were to look at this map and try to draw a real hill from it, we would know that it's, it starts at a level part and then it goes up and draws this little hill and then it goes down and then it comes over here and it continues going down. It goes down into a little dip and then it comes back up to level. So it might look something like this. Um, I think I might have it backwards, but where it goes up is where you have this hill. Um, and then it goes down below. So you see here, we'll start with, we'll call this level of where we started. It goes up and that's our regular circles that looked like that. And then it dips down here. And these are our circles that had all the lines inside to show that we are going down. Okay. So you can tell from this that you have a lot of freedom in what you choose to draw in the contour lines as much as they can be confusing and have a lot of different aspects to them and understanding well, how far apart they are, are they, how much height difference is there between the lines and what does it mean if they have other little lines and well, how do I know how high up it is? There are a lot of questions to ask, but once you figure out the basics, you could take pretty much any 3D landscape and draw the elevation change using contour lines, which is a pretty powerful tool because you're not always able to look at a map that will show you um, with physical um, raises or dips in the map, what the elevation is like. Shannon says, are we almost done? Yeah, we, we have about five minutes left and then we're gonna wrap up. Um, so that's what you can do with the contour lines. This is especially helpful if you are trying to draw a map for yourself of something without doing it in 3D. I like 3D design. so. If, if I were to do it, I would say, go get in the 3D modeling program and create a model. But that's not always something you can do. And sometimes you need to have an image that you can give to somebody or have an image you can reference. Or if you're hiking and you wanna know, okay, well, I could take route A or route B. My legs are really tired. I don't wanna go up a steep hill. You can look and see, okay, well, maybe, um, you know, Route A looks something like this, and Route B is like that. Well, if this is Route A and this is Route B, I'm gonna be pretty certain that with tire legs, I wanna take Route B, because this shows me that there's a wide distance that to walk between the elevation changes, and this tells me, with all these lines being really close together, that for every little bit I walk forward, I'm gonna be going up quite a bit. Um, which means that I would not want to walk that with tired legs. But if I want to take my bike or take a sled and have a great ride down, I would look at this and say, oh, no way, that's, that's like nothing. I want something like this. Um, so it's a useful skill to be able to read maps like this. It's also just interesting to be able to see because often um, if you're looking through like plans for an old farm or I think at Delphi, I would think we have some maps that show contours of the whole campus, which can be really interesting to look at because we have such a big campus with so many hills and so many places to explore that it would be nice to know, oh, well, that looks like a big hill. I wonder what we could see from the top of that without necessarily having to travel all the way out there. Um, so that's some of the use and basics of understanding contour maps. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A section. Otherwise, that's all that I have to go over. Um, but I hope you learned something about maps and contour lines and how they work and what they are. Because um, I definitely learned a lot when I was looking through some of this data to prepare this. Okay. Bye Milo. Gerard says, do you know a joke about geography? I don't know any jokes about geography actually. 
Um, that would be good for me to learn. Bye, Evan. Bye, Ian. Thank you guys for coming in. Evan, you know a joke about geography? Tell it to us. Listen. Bye, Gerard. Bye, Oakley. Bye, April.